So I'm not going to go too deep on fertilization. When egg is fertilized, how many sperm cells enter the egg, the fertilocyte? One. Thing is, sometimes two can walk in. In this case, this weird assembly usually dies. Okay, does that make sense to you? Now, interesting feature. After the sperm cell, using its so-called acrosome at the tip, Okay, so this is the acrosome. So acrosome is used to get through the so-called corona radiata of the oocyte. When it gets through, it fuses, and basically the cell, the fertilized egg, uh, due to the release of calcium, becomes impenetrable for other sperm cells. I usually compare it to this. So first sperm cell walks in and shuts the door nothing can walk behind it. Does that make sense? Now, fertilized um, egg travels its pretty long way through the fallopian tubes in the uterus and implants in the uterus into endometrium, into stratum functionalis. Does that make sense? Now, the cells called trophoblasts are formed at the border between the developing embryo and the endometrium and initially feeding is through trophoblasts okay but eventually feeding goes on through placenta are we clear Okay. Now, what I want you to understand, I, I really want you to understand kind of the blood flow to and from the placenta. So, if this is placenta, this is fetus. Okay, now look at this. In terms of the blood flow, um, I'm going to use red color for oxygenated blood and blue color for deoxygenated, okay? Now look what happens on the mother's side. Uterine arteries deliver oxygenated blood to the placenta. And uterine veins take it away. Seems completely traditional, correct? Arteries develop, deliver oxygenated blood, veins take it away. Do fetuses breathe? Not. They don't like they don't breathe, breathe, they don't ventilate, right? So the role of lungs in fetuses is taken over by the placenta. Am I clear? So it turns out that the blood vessel that gets deoxygenated blood to placenta, it is an artery and it is umbilical artery. And the blood vessel that takes oxygenated blood away is umbilical vein. So you see the similarity between the pulmonary circuit in an adult and so to say placental circuit in the neonate. Okay? Does that make sense? I'm trying to think like what, I mean, look, I, I feel not qualified talking about it, like seriously. Um, there, I would love to talk about syncytial cells and the proteins in sitting that 
uh, prevents passing of pathogens across placenta, but it's more microbiology material, so I really don't, don't want to talk about it. A um, few things that I want to highlight, as you remember, there is no actual contact between the blood. Okay, does that make sense? And also there's so-called double bore effect, increased concentration of CO2, CO2 that comes from the fetus, improves the oxygen unloading on the maternal side, okay? And the fetal hemoglobin is, is much higher affinity to um, oxygen than maternal hemoglobin. Fetal hemoglobin is slightly different. It is more, so basically it takes oxygen away, pulls it out of maternal hemoglobin. Uh, yeah, one of the common problems during the pregnancy, as you may know, is eclampsia and preeclampsia. Basically, kidneys don't properly work uh, because <coughs> the volume of blood increases dramatically. And if kidneys do not <coughs> clear up all the toxins that inevitably mother and fetus generate, that may lead to <coughs> preeclampsia and eclampsia, which are kind of two stages of the same problem. Does that make sense? And that accumulation of toxins may actually <coughs> threaten the livelihood of a child and of a mother. And usually in cases of preeclampsia and eclampsia, uh, the birth is induced. Okay, it can be premature, but now we have pretty good capacity carrying out the care of, you know, premature born babies. Now, 